Australians are struggling to pay their mortgages and rent. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about an article from Domain about Australians struggling to pay their mortgages and rent. Now, one thing I want to draw to your attention before we get into this and a few other things is you've got to realize Domain is a listed company. So with a 60% ownership by Fairfax. You know, they're a property platform and they've got a whole ecosystem of property solutions, they say. So they're a commercial business. They make money in property, advertising, research, the whole sector. So anything that gets the clicks, anything that gets the views, well, it's important. So I think we need to be uh, look at this with a bit of a critical eye when we're reading this and to see what kind of tangent could they be taking at it. Because you've got to remember, negative news gets the views. I've seen it on YouTube, everyone. I could do a positive video. No one will watch it. You do something a little scary or concerning and, and people are worried. Understandably so. That's an evolutionary response. But before we have a look at that, I'm going to do a sponsorship plug for the live stream that Rachel and I have tonight on Twitch, on our Twitch show. Check it out. Today we'll be discussing education, homeschooling, distance ed, and day school, and just share our experiences with people. One thing everyone says, I'd never homeschool. My kids will be unsocialized, which is kind of funny because you, you see, that's what people worry about in the homeschooling community. So everyone socializes and meets together, and it works really well. So let's have a look at some of the asking rents around the country before we jump into this article looking at, well, looking at the uh, struggles that people are having to pay their mortgage and their rents to get a bit of an idea of how it's going. If we jump here, we can see Sydney rents are jumping up, and I'm just going to full screen this so I can see it as well. We can see here all houses is up 5%, 689 bucks. Three bedrooms, $711. So you can see everyone that climb up there in rents. Apartments have oh, gone up a little bit, but they're still a bit further down. Now, if we jump to Melbourne, we can see as well, Melbourne, well, they're going down, down and slightly starting to jump up. We, we looked at a few articles, uh, particularly about apartments. So all units, you can see 363, two betters, 388, and uh, kind of flat, 0%, 0% change on the previous week. On the rolling month, it's up 1.2, 0.5 up on the quarter, 12 months, it's down 5.6. For all units, it's down 9.5. Houses, not as much dramatic movement over the year, but you can see in this image that they certainly have corrected. This is because, well, of all of the lockdowns and issues, people are starting to move out of the apartments. And we'll finish up by looking at Brisbane as well, and it's quite, well, quite stark. The 10-year all-houses change, oh, sorry, the 12-month all-houses change is over, over, if you can see it here, over bloody 10% increase, everyone. Three bedroom up 8.9%. Even apartments are up 2.4 in, in 12 months and five, uh, 4.3 in 12 months as well for two bedders. So demand is up in Brisbane. Is this people leaving the uh, southern states to come up to good old sunny Queensland? Perhaps we're hearing that. And anecdotally, we're also hearing about in the regions where rents are just going to the moon and asking prices are shooting up. So let's have a look at this article to see what they're talking about, struggling to pay for mortgages and rents. Almost one third of Australians face a rental or mortgage stress, the survey found. Now, there's a few things we need to look at here. Mortgage stress, what is the definition of this? Usually you're looking at about 30% of your disposable income is going towards your payment for your mortgage or your rent costs. Now, that's an old argument, an old uh, suggestion. Uh, or definition, and there's suggestions that it needs to change. It's more important the lower your income is. So if you're in the bottom 30% income bracket, this mortgage stress is going to have more of an impact than if you're at a much higher level paying the same percentage of your total income on rent. So almost a third of Australians say they face mortgage or rental stress amid the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, with household savings also taking a hit in recent months. Against a backdrop of rapidly rising property prices and record high rents across much of the country. And remember, everyone, I'll just, just remind you all, we've just had our first recession in 28 years, guys. We've got a backdrop of rapidly rising property prices and record high rents. 
31% of people are struggling to make their rent or home loan payments, new figures show. While this is down slightly from 33% of renters and homeowners in June, it is well up on the 23% of respondents who reported rent or home loan stress in July last year. The Finder Consumer Sentiment Tracker shows stress levels have been rising steadily since. So while this article is on domain, we have to remind ourselves of Finder. Now, they're a privately held comparison website, and, well, they need to generate traffic. Website traffic views are an important part of them. Does that question their, the validity of their research? Well, that's just something to keep in mind, everyone. So rent or home loan rates, uh, home loan stress. So this isn't, one could argue this is a commercial research, not academic. So uh, percentage of Australians who indicate they are struggling to make their rent or home loan payments. The shaded area covers the period between the first and last lockdowns in Australia. There we go. Excluding the most recent lockdowns. So it's there from their consumer sentiment tracker at 31% now. Graham Cook, head of consumer research at Finder, says financial stress had been going in the opposite direction to what might be expected, with stress lower down last year despite the coronavirus pandemic. Well, no, I can I can tell you why I think it it's it's been going lower than expected. You know, just just an idea. Bear with me as I find this one little chart that I think will show you why it's probably been going lower, and that's well. JobKeeper, the Stimmies, you know, home builder guys. Come on. This shows that the government payments were effective in relieving some of the financial pressure resulting from the first lockdowns, he said. He noted the stress metric had raised as lockdowns continued and as government support payments were lifted. People overextended themselves, really? To keep up with rising property prices could also be a factor for increased mortgage stress, particularly among recent first-home buyers, as could recent increases in rates for fixed mortgages. Now, the rates increases that he's alluding to, uh, we've seen them. We've seen some of the banks start to increase rates. Now, the cash rate is still sitting at 0.1%. It hasn't moved. You can look at this chart, uh, just the historic rates that used to exist back in the day. There's a whole generation that only knows rates going down. So... Will the banks, will the RBA lift up rates? We'll have to see. And then what will happen to people that have pushed themselves too far to the edge? Now, here's the thing. We're getting mixed messages here because I'll bring up some information from the RBA. We can have a look. This is the number of loans in negative equity. It's going down from 2009. Okay. You've got here home loan prepayments. It's gone up since 2012 to 2020. Share of total household lending. People are paying ahead, owners and investors. You've got here, you've got household liquidity buffers, and this is all from the RBA, indebted homeowners and renters. And we have here as well, deposits, mortgage prepayments. It's going up. People have savings. People have stashed some away. What I think we're seeing here is, well, the differences in in the Australian economy, in, in people that are uh, getting ahead and the people that are not. We really have a K-shaped economy here, guys, and I think this is going to be exacerbated even more by the recession, or really the lockdown recession. Mr. Cook noted average monthly cash savings had also taken a hit, dropping to 703 in June, its lowest level since March 2020, and down from a peak of 953 in February. AMP Capital Chief Economist Shane Oliver said mortgage and rental stress might have increased when Australia went into lockdown early last year, but the rollout of mortgage repayment holidays, JobKeeper, and the increased job seeker payment combined with further cuts to interest rates had eased stress in the months that followed. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the government came to the rescue, guys. Reduced spending and increased savings last year by those whose income was not impacted by the pandemic meant more people might have gotten on their mortgage repayments as well. Mr. Oliver said the end of support payments and repayment holidays, along with rapidly rising property prices, which had, have seen people take on larger loans and growing talk of future rate hikes, could all have contributed to rising stress levels. The level of interest payments to household income has collapsed relative Relatively, so in theory, you could argue mortgage stress should be lower because we don't have the high levels of interest rates. 
but we know that people have to borrow a lot more to get into the market, and people may stress over the amount they've had to borrow, he said. That's the thing. We've got low rates, everyone, but you've got to borrow more to, to get into property. You've got to borrow more to get into property. So no, who wins in the end? Well, the banks win in the end, don't they? The banks win. Mr. Oliver expected stress levels for those impacted by the current Sydney lockdown would fare similar to those last time, but noted the support payments were less generous than those seen last year. Well, he's right there, everyone. I'll just, I'll just clean that out. However, he noted there was often a disconnect between mortgage stress indicators and the level of defaults or non-performing loans, suggesting that while many people were stressed, the bulk were still able to meet their repayments. It comes after a report released by Consumer Group Choice earlier this year found that more than 130,000 households in New South Wales and Victoria alone were on the brink of financial crisis due to mortgage stress. And this is where we're seeing this more and more, people worrying about mortgage stress. Martin North, he's, he's you know, highlighting the amount of mortgage stress that's out there. This is where I, I challenge the definition. I, I think the people that are arguing that it's, it's, got, it's not just simply the share of your income that's going towards your your living costs, your accommodation costs, it needs to be factored into how, what level of, you know, where you're sitting on the income distribution. If you're right at the bottom, 30% of your rent's going to make, you know, 30% of your income going to your housing is going to be, have a bigger impact than if you're at the higher level of income. You've got more room to move. If you're at the bottom, you can't really downgrade, can you? Maybe you can a little bit, but not, not as easily as if you're, you know, paying a fortune, you can just go to a normal house. Financial Rights Legal Center, which offers advice and advocacy for those in financial stress, is consistently getting calls daily from those in mortgage stress, says Senior Police and Communications Officer Julia Davis. There are often referrals from the banks, people who were on, on the COVID-related mortgage deferral program during 2020, and all those deferrals have come to an end, and people are not in a position to go back to resuming normal repayments. And we're seeing it now. You know, mortgage holidays are back. The mortgage repayment holidays are back. I wonder if we're going to see articles again, like we did, you know, last year, where the banks were suggesting people go to the food banks to meet their payments. Every time, every time there were, you know, power bills come out in South Australia, the food banks get a sudden influx of people for some reason. While some have, have uh, so, while some had already been facing hardship that was exacerbated by the pandemic, Others worked in hard-hit industries like tourism and hospitality and simply have not been able to recover since. Now, here's the sad thing, guys. There are going to be some people that are just, they're going to have to lose their, ho their homes. This is what happens. We're in a recession. You know, the argue, these are the prices that we're paying for these lockdowns. Remember this, okay? The next time you see someone calling for a lockdown, calling for an intervention, the and it's going to happen. Mark my words, we'll see it in the next five years' time. People will be calling for lockdowns for any bloody thing. I bet you. Just waiting for the climate fanatics to call it, or the vegans to call it, lockdown, so you all eat, eat rubbish. Anyway, I'm going off topic again. She feared the latest lockdowns would only add the to the financial stress of those who had already chewed down on their savings last year and noted some people were already spending less on food and other essentials in order to meet their repayments. Ms. Davis said the increasing stress levels were another reminder of why an overhaul of responsible lending laws still before the Senate should not go ahead, with concerns it could see more Australians get loaded up with unsuitable debt. Okay, now my, here's my issue with this. I would argue that people need to be treated like adults and have individual agency, everyone. That, that's my argument there. Uh, we can't put all of our responsibilities onto the bank. If someone borrows more than they can manage, it's their own fault. What if someone borrows completely reasonably, completely sensibly, but their entire industry gets destroyed through not even, not even lockdowns, just something happens? If there's a disaster, what about if there's a marriage breakdown and then the family loses their home and they're all struggling? Normal things happen in life. You've got to prepare for them as best as you can. And we can't always... The, the thing is, the more regulations, rules, and impediments you put... It's just about molly, molly coddling people and uh, pretending that people don't have individual agency. That's it. It really feels like that's where Australia is going. What has happened to Australia, guys? Really, what has? A big concern was that those already facing financial stress 
could turn to third-tier lenders who may help them refinance at shocking rates that they couldn't afford to pay off. Well, then, okay, don't be an idiot. If you're struggling that much, you may need to sell your home. Okay, that's life. Mr. Oliver added overhauling responsible lending laws seemed unnecessary given the surge in lending suggested the current rules were not a constraint to, on borrowing and added it seemed jarring to relax the laws at the same time as the RBA and APRA were warning banks to maintain lending standards. Are the banks really going crazy with getting a loan? Guys, How many? let, let me know in the comments how easy it's been for you to get a loan. Come on. He also expressed concerns that the 60,000 government loan scheme spots, which had helped first-home buyers and single parents get into the market with lower deposits, well, yeah, with 2% and 5% deposits, could cause higher mortgage stress levels down the line. Oh, you think? While it was desirable to get these groups onto the property ladder, he said there was a danger in more people borrowing at very high loan-to-value ratios. Yeah, 98% loan-to-value ratios at a market when when it's overheated because the government is juicing up the entire construction industry. Can't see any anything, anything at all happening with this. Anything wrong at all. So what do you think, everyone? We're getting some mixed messages here. What we're seeing from the RBA with regards to loans and negative equity and prepayments, and even how some groups have access, uh, the ability to raise $2,000, is a very different picture to what we're seeing here with a third of Australians facing mortgage stress. But then we're also seeing claims that mortgage stress doesn't necessarily align with defaults and people getting in trouble with their loans. But then we still have organizations like good old, you know, here we go, I'll bring this one up, the Australian Banking Association, everyone. Everyone's favorite, favorite organization bringing in, you know, looking out for you. The banks have got your backs, guys. They're, they're you know, letting you, letting you take holidays from your mortgage. So what do you think? What's the solution to this? Well, fundamentally, I'd, I'd argue it comes down to individual responsibility and agency and improving financial literacy. But the problem is we've, we've got a situation here where our government will do whatever they can to intervene in the market to prop up property. So is it that ludicrous to take on the risk of stress when you've seen how the government will pull out all stops? You tell me, guys. As always... Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. Are you suffering from mortgage stress, or do you know someone that has? Or does the, you know, 30% of your income going towards paying for your housing, is that nothing if you've actually had to save a deposit and pay that for your, you know, back in the day? This is the thing. Do we have a whole generation of people that are hardened by such, you know, tough a tough fight to get into property that the old boomer metric just doesn't apply anymore. 30%? That's a discount. Let us know in the comments. Take care, guys. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Take care. I'll see you next time. And join us for Twitch tonight. Bye for now.